In this episode of BEA Conversations, we speak. We are speaking with Amelia Rosaman, acting CEO of Business Events Sarawa. So uh, Amelia has chosen today to speak with us on a topic that is really raw and close to her heart, in terms of women supporting women from a rural and even tribal. Uh, uh, perspective, you know, many of us could be city siders. We may not understand uh, the 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 history and the legacy uh, behind uh, some of the families that are not living in main first year cities like us. But Amelia is here to share the story. So thank you so much for joining us, Amelia. Thanks, El. Good to be so, here. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I, and when you reach out and say that you like to share the story, I am like, yep. Let's do that because I think we need to get an understanding of what you actually mean. So, can you share with us? All right. Um, well, this this is about empowering young and privileged women um, to find the strength and confidence within themselves to be self-sufficient and become a success story of their own. You know, like when you when I receive an email from you, you know, like in my heart I was like, oh my god, you know, this is something that I must take part in because you know. Um, you know, it's it's very emotional for me. Um, it's it's something that's very emotional for me because you know, whenever I go to the rural areas and then you know, I saw these young girls and I could see myself when I was when I was younger. And you know, luxuries and education is not something that we are very familiar with. And as I grew older, I realized that. The one and only way to break the cycle of poverty is to equip myself uh, with the necessary skill and knowledge, education, to get to where I wanted to be. You know, as they say today, you have to be a hustler. <laughs> yeah. So, what are some of the opportunities that you know we can present to young women in the rural areas, especially when it comes to education opportunities? Well, you know, like. Opportunities is something you can create it and something that may present it in front of your eyes. And, you know, um, I think that, you know, for them, for us, what we can do, we can present opportunity for them. I am inspired by my aunt who has helped me with my education. And I remember she told me when I'm graduated and success one day, I do not have to pay her for every single penny that she has invested in my education. Instead, I help others and at least one person just how she has helped me. Personally, I have helped my siblings and nieces in their education and make sure that this culture continues in the family. And the same system can be implemented. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't have to be in Sarawak. It can be anywhere part of the world where you know a goodwill program for underprivileged girls at the villages you know can be done you can help few girls and the moment the few girls are being able to sustain herself and she could help others too so you know um, you can provide friendship maternal encouragement funding and whatever else necessary to help the girls ease their personal burdens and stay in school and hopefully this new culture will pass on in her or his family and community. For women leaders who are ready to help um, a girl from a lesser privileged background, what are some of the awareness that he, I mean, she should know? And what are some of the, um, I guess, where, where do we start? Well, you know, like, following, um, if you look at um, what I do right now, you know, I'm in a business event. So we do have a lot of associations that are working with us. So, you know, um, first you might want to start with looking at the right associations that tap into the education, women, children, and just touch base with your community. I think, you know, um, there's a lot of um, sources where you can find these um, rural um Rural, rural girls that who need help, yeah. And many a times when we, you know, in the past have visited different villages in different countries, um, some of the common terms that have been used is always about breaking the cycle of yes. poverty and, and things like that. So there, there are in some villages uh, uh, where they are part of a qualifying program over a two-year period to make sure that whatever help that they receive 
will be able to sustain itself when the help leaves the village. So what are some of the things that is so crucial that we can actually help to break that cycle permanently and it's not just a temporary money fix? Yes, that's why, you know, when we set up, when I, when the, the personal program that I have set up um, for the underprivileged girls in the rural area is that it's more on mentorship because you are changing the culture of the community. So you can have the seed funding to start with a few girls, few youngsters first, and then from there it should grow. And that kind of system should be implemented in their family and communities. Because there's no point for you to help the girls only, but the big end of the support, the community and families is not there. So the program has to be um, created, not just for the girls. It's not about funding actually, you know. Funding, you know, the moment the community and the family understand this, the funding will come through. But, you know, if you they have extra funding, it will be make it easier for the girls. And at the same time, provide the community and the girls with an information. Where else the funding coming from? It does not have to be a donation. I myself, you know, I was funded by the, um, how do you call it? Um, with the, from the welfare department mm. throughout my high school. So, you know, not many girls know where to find the funding. I'm so sorry. It's so emotional. Of course it is. I mean, thank you so much for being, for sharing this vulnerability. Um, because obviously you're a very accomplished businesswoman now. And to be able to share the story is so important. And I think one of the things that we also, I just want to raise awareness. I think, as you, as you said earlier, potentially that help could shift culture but we also want to balance the sensitivity between making sure that the culture isn't altered but yet presents a, a bright future for next generation of rural girls so what how do you manage that conversation tenderly without disrupting uh what uh, a traditional rural area believe it's always very good to work with the local people and do a lot of observation first before you really come in. Um, in my case, it's much easier for me because I'm very familiar with the culture, although it's an Iban tribe or Hidayu tribe, um, because I am already exposed. But for those who are not familiar, it's good to work with the local people and you know stay in their villages for a few days and understand you know what are the real issue is before you can really come in and, you know, mm. do all the good real thing that you want to do. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And be their friends, they will talk to you and yeah. And can we turn the attention a little bit on, on, on you? Because I, I think that, you know, you've got so much to share. What are some of the things that you have learned being mentored yourself to achieve what you have today? What are some of the important lessons you felt that you have learned? Um, I think being not, um, not all of us are blessed with, um, you know, very smart in school. You're not a straight A student, but one thing that I learned is that you have to create your opportunities. Mm. Opportunities is not always there for you to grab, but you need to be able to create one. And I think, you know, like, you know, people always say, you know, street smart, street smart is very good. Um, because I think that has helped me a lot in my education, in building my career and at the same time, you know, um, when I look at those girls, they're not smart in school but you know what they have is that, you know, they have determination, they want to change and then, you know, like, well, when you look at them um, working and earn a living just to continue their school, um, you know, it's very difficult to to be in their shoes yep. Yep. and I think that you know that's where they find their own opportunity and find their ways um, to complete their education and school so they can change their life and you know and help their families yeah I, I think I just want to shed light up about a point that you mentioned earlier it is not just about financial yes of course if they are funding it makes a lot of things easier but it is about that mentorship that uh, I would say someone that they can turn to uh, when they when they when they have questions to ask. So, would what sort of mentors will these girls, you know, 
will be looking for and even reflecting on when you were young what sort of mentors were you hoping to to get without knowing that you know the term mentorship back then yeah they they don't know the word mentorship you know it's more like a friendship I remember when I collect I uh, when I gathered um six girls and I just show them you know like a few photos of me um uh, you know traveling around the world and then you know and then I say that you know how do you think I can get there mm. and they said that are you coming from the rich family I said no you know and I show them you know um the photo that I was before and I said that you know we are not much different like not in the world I would think that I would be able to travel not even to Kuala Lumpur you know mm-hmm. yeah so you know i say that you know if you want to be able to travel like this and you know have a different life the only way that you can do it is through education and yep. you need to you need to keep repeating that like a broken cd or broken record you know to really get it observed in their mind because sometimes when you ask them what is your ambition you'll be shocked with what they say and the hope that you know the community or your family have to you because you're not a smart student they probably if you are better off to be a wife you know one day and hopefully you can find a husband but mm-hmm. that is not how you know we want the young girls to be you yeah. can be like playing in your high school it doesn't matter you know nowadays there's something that called we call entrepreneurship creative industry that does not require those kind of education but you know you have the drive and a creativity to make a difference yeah yeah and also i think we want to make it very clear that there's nothing wrong being if they absolutely love one or want to be a housewife or love it there's nothing wrong i think there's, I there's think, nothing wrong yeah definitely I, there's nothing wrong but you want them to have a better option for themselves exactly. rather than just at the end you know like this exactly. and you know people are expecting you to be a housewife but they want they must have an option of themselves yeah, yeah. I think choice is 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 bliss. I was a housewife too at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and we all when we are, when we are in isolation, we all become more creative in the kitchen. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure that our conversation is clear in a way that is sending a message that I think whilst we are not able to travel at the moment, we can look at in our within our local network. who can we reach out to because many a times when we um you know when when I always say we uh very likely in a, in a way that coming from a mindset of a city sider that mm-hmm. we always think that oh someone else in another country or in another town that might need our help but i think at the moment we can just look around us and i think there's always someone there that we can we can help especially with yeah. women supporting women it can be the smallest gesture a phone call Uh, a hello uh, a questioning of you know where they see their lives and then provide some connections um because at the end of the day um they have to make their choice and they have to work hard because it is yeah. it, not given you know uh, yeah. you work very very hard nothing is sort of like fall on your lap by accident you always have to hustle like you said so i think the message needs to be clear in terms of we can help someone locally without yeah. venturing without waiting for travel to resume during the mco time it will be a a challenge because i think around their area um the one they are familiar with um we will not have any connection even internet or phone or even a phone line so you know um i think you know during this time it's good to uh, brainstorm and come up with a solid a new program that are more effective and looking into a big picture i do not mind to um, to take that responsibility where we can the ba the woman you know um, i i i've seen you know all of the videos and i think that you know there's one thing in common that we all have is that we want we women are united so women this coexisting with men in this world women can look bigger picture not just to help other women but men too women yeah. can lead to make these changes So I think that you know if you know we can find a collaboration during this um covid time develop a stronger program for every destination that who are has been participated that in any woman you know like I'm sure that you know we can prepare um um when the time comes like like covid right now you know where we cannot reach them out you know what else can we do yeah, yeah. I, and I think we can still reach out to them by a phone call by connection and um and you know it's very it's so admirable that you reach out and say that you know as a BA influencer as a uh women supporting women uh 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 champion you are you are very open for 
people from anywhere in the world to connect through to you to mm-hmm. help some other girls in terms of conversation. Yeah. So that that is really really big on you. So okay. we thank you so much for for doing that and for sharing your story. I think that this is only the start uh, of that uh, affirmative action instead of just words. And I think there are many examples. Uh, just reflecting on what you said earlier, connect ourselves with an association or with an organization that uh, one can trust. Uh, they have got um, a credible. Um, um, accolades in terms of their work, in terms of helping communities, helping women, yeah. um, and uh, and I and I feel that uh, the world is our oyster when it comes to supporting each other. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, El. Thank you so much, and once again, thank you for sharing your vulnerability as a leader because I think it's so needed. It's not just about women or men being strong; it is about showing your heart. Uh, and having the right intention to achieve what we need to achieve together. Thank you.